Hello guys, welcome to Drill's Point. Uh, we are in the middle of video, video lectures on Android application development. Here we will be studying about how do we develop applications for Android. In the last lecture, we have seen how do we run our Hello World application onto our AVDs. But you were unaware about the about the process, about the fold, and about the project structure in Android. But this video would make you aware about all these things. So this is all about Android project structure. Now, if you go to your uh, studio project structure, you would be seeing a similar type of structure. Just navigate yourself to the project from this drop down menu. On going to the project, you would be finding such a structure wherein you would be having a folder named as app. In this folder, you would be finding a folder of build, a folder of libs, a folder of src and a res folder, along with a manifest file. These things are the, are the parts of the application which we would be using frequently in the upcoming lectures. Now let's have a quick uh, session about what these things are all, are all about. So the build. Now what is the build? All the files that are there that have been generated out of our Java files come as a part of the build. Even your application after being compiling the APK file that we get comes as a part of the build. So if I see that in the output, the APK is a part of the build, the APK file that we get. And you all are very much aware that we as, you know, as programmers, as developers, always distribute our APKs to the user. So I think you have got about build. Now you would be finding some more folders in the build as generated intermediates and output. I have told you about gen uh, the generated ones, the files that are generated automatically from the Java to the dot, to the dot class files output are our this uh, apk files now let's come to the next part or the next session or the next module which is the libs now what are libs see imagine you want to use an existing library see a library of reading an xml a library of uh, sending some email all these libraries are predefined and are available as jars to you so as a developer you just go to your libs folder you import these jars and now you are good and you can automatically include all your jars over here the jars included over here would give their functionality in your java class where you can use these functionalities to produce your code this makes the android application easier from the developer point of view now the next is the src folder if you can see properly under the src folder under the main we are getting the option of java and res let's come to java first of all i think you are very much aware what java is and what does java stand for any you know we have been hearing this from very frequently and very often we have found that to learn android application development you need java but where do we use java all the java that we use or that we need is actually written in this java folder in this java folder you are given a sample or i can say a normal uh, package which is a unique identifier of your application this identifier is having a java file or can have multiple java files which you would be using for your coding in our in your daily purpose all the application code is in this particular java file we also call them the activity files we will be covering them in the upcoming sessions so after the src main java we have the next one which is src main res as the word res is very clear what does the word res means res means some resources now what are the resources for you resources are nothing but small small packages or small individual components that stand alone say i'm using an image background for my application where do i store that thing i'm using a ui or xml where do i store that thing my the icon of my application where do i store all these things all these things are actually saved into your resource or the res folder res means resources and if you can look here over here res is having these all stuff what is it in res drawable drawable are the normal images that you are having say a background image a, a, a image that you are learning from the internet anything that is that's a static image component is there in the drawable then the layout now what is the layout uh, as we have already seen that and we have seen that there was an xml file which we named as activity underscore main dot xml that xml file is there in this layout folder what do what 
is this XML all about? This XML is nothing more than the UI of the application. Whatever user interface you see, the login page, the news, the login page, the news page, any page on an application that you are seeing is a is the part of this uh, layout file. This layout folder is the holder of all the XML or the UI that we are having in our application. It can be as small as as a small button which is being called into the another XML or can be as large as the entire page itself. After this layout, we are having some mid maps. Now, what are mid maps? Mid maps are the icons that we are having over here. If you look at it, these are having some configuration or some, some pixel density as HDPI, MHDP, MDPI, XHDPI and double XHDPI and so on. Now, what are these? This stands for high density pixel intensity. Now, you are, uh, you, the same application will be running on an XS5 and same application will be running on a small uh, smartphone or a very basic smartphone. How do we differentiate? Are they having the same resolution? No. Based on the resolution, we can choose which, which icon do we need to use for the application. So after this, we are having the values folder. The values folder are basically some static component or some static files or some static values that you are having. Say the name of the application. Say like in this example, the hello world, or I am having some string component that I'm going to be using. So any static components like the, like some strings, some color codes, some, uh, then we can have some, you know, some styles, some animations, all these things come as a part of the values and are there in the values folder. <coughs> After this value, we are having the Android manifest.xml. Now what is the Android manifest.xml? Android manifest.xml is the main component holder of the application. All the things that are there in the application is, is defined. Here we would be covering a proper video session on Android, Android manifest.xml which would be having all the details about these things. What can be there in this manifest file would be a part of our subsequent videos. So I think the entire project structure is very much clear in your head. Don't worry, they would be having a hands-on session right now after this theory part when you when I would be you taking you through, through all the parts, what is the resource, where are we having them. So we will be having a more in-depth and more practical knowledge after this. So now let's see what's next in the house. Next, we are having some Android package components or Android project components. Now, what is about the components? You know, some there are some some parts which which are as an information to you like applications are written in java programming language we have already seen that applications are collection of reusable components what do you mean by reusable components any java file which you are having and you would be able to reuse them and you would be able to use them in some other applications or in some other activity these are all things so the entire application is nothing but some reusable components put together that help us to give the best out of the things. Now, Android are compiled into the APK file that is Android package file, or we can also call Android packaging file or kit. This APK file is distributed to the users or to the end user who would be actually using the application. Each application runs in its own sandbox and Linux, Linux process. This means that entire application is having its own, you know, it's having its own scope, its own liability. If you need to use the use application or use something from this sandbox, you need to explicitly mention the permissions. We would be covering the permission in the upcoming session when we are having a permission for any features that we are using. Now, applications consist of components, manifest file and resources. Components would be the part of the next video. Manifest would be the part of subsequent videos and resources we have discussed in the previous slide that any any component of the application that we are using is a resource. The next point is almost all Java classes can be used. This means that the entire package or the entire application is having some Java files that can be used freely throughout the program. The best part about Android, there is no main function. Yes, we don't have a main function in, in Android. The starting of the starting point of Android is defined by something we call it as activity. Activity is the visual component of the application that is corresponding to a screen. Each, each screen can have only one activity linked to it. Then each activity has a life cycle which is handled by the Android operating system. 
So the life cycle means where the activity starts, where activity ends. It is handled by the operating, operating system itself. This would be a part of the subsequent videos where we, where we would be having a practical session on how the activity life cycle is working. So this was all about the Android project structure.